Well, it's the Halloween season once again. Any franchise you can think of will have its more scarier moments, and Toho Project is no exception. Although Zun has never made an official Toho Halloween product, it's the fans that steal the show with their very scary items. Yet there is one series that has a cult following, a strange art style, and a very, very cursed storyline. <laughs> Koishi Komeiji's heartthrobbing adventure, also known as that one series that people groan at. It's a strange series featuring everyone's favorite Koishi Komeiji on a poorly drawn adventure to retrieve a fishing rod, while on the way watching the characters of Toho going mad. It sounds like something people would forget in like two weeks, but man, oh man, has they got a cult following. So why not find out why the series made by one artist with a questionable art style is able to take over Toho? At least for a little bit. We gotta go back to the beginning. In August 2008, Subterranean Animism released a high acclaim, featuring great gameplay and lovable characters that would later become fan favorites, most notably the Komeiji sisters. Satori and Koishi became well loved for some reason. Their fans loved them due to how mysterious they are, especially their third eyes. They were getting doujins and fanfiction.net stories, or even the occasional animation. Oh, wait. Dolgen animations are rare, but when they do happen, they get lots of attention. Memories of Phantasm is the most well-known Toho anime, and... As a reminder, this is all made by the fans. A few others released over the years, like that one Summer Night's Dream, or even that PC-98 trailer that just never went anywhere. But most animations that you will see are solo animators creating stories with Miku Miku Dance, or even on their own. Most of these animations are forgotten to time, but one has managed to survive as a cold classic to this day. The amazing. The horrifying. Uh, you already know what it is. Koishi Komeiji's heart drumming adventure, also known as... Releasing in 2009 on Nico Nico Doga by user Sentaku Bune, it follows the story of Koishi Komeiji enjoying her day, but she realizes that she does not have a fishing rod, so she tries to borrow one from the Scarlet Devil Mansion, but the residents refuse, so Koishi brutally kills Mailing and Flandra. Satori felt ashamed of her sister's actions, so she goes to the mansion and accepts punishment in place of her sister. Then, Satori reveals that Koakuma is evil-hearted, but Patrulli refuses to believe her, so another fight breaks out. Then the story devolves into the Gensokyo residents turning evil and lots and lots of blood. Then there was a side plot about the moon, Lunarians, blah blah blah, most people care about the dying. When the first episode was released in 2009, it received a bit of attention. It wasn't great compared to Memories of Phantasm, but it was a charming thing. It had the homemade feeling that big budget productions just cannot capture. The art style is among the most noticeable things from the series. The chibi-like lanky body, the coloring outside the lines, and the purple things below the eyes produce a jarring children's drawing effect, especially knowing the violent moments. In the earlier episodes, I don't know if you can actually consider it animation. It's more of a video comic strip, but later on, it becomes more advanced, featuring moving backgrounds. Ooh. The series has received criticism for being poor quality, animation and story-wise. But then again, it's only fair to give something my open mind. So, I suppose we should give it a try. <laughs> oh, those were insane. Maybe a little heartthrobbing even. I asked my community for what spooky suggestions I should talk about, and some of your suggestions were... Oh no. It should be obvious, but um, spoilers. So, don't complain, I warned you, let's, let's just move on. Cerno vs. Star Sapphire is one of the battles of all time. Star Sapphire encounters Cerno and they have a brutal anime style battle where you can even see it from the sky with a cartoon cloud. Star Sapphire wanted to end Cerno because she believed she was the strongest of them all, even bringing a chainsaw to prove it. Cerno had to defend against Star to protect Dialse. Thankfully, she won, but for whatever reason, Dialse chokes on Cerno Bart Simpson style. 
As I stated earlier, Satori goes to the Scarlet Devil Mansion to take responsibility for her sister since the news of the murder has been spread all around thanks to Aya. She then finds out the mystery behind Koakuma, who has been trapped in the Scarlet Devil Mansion for a long time. She wanted to break free, but nobody knew her true secret, until Satori figured out her dirty soul. The mansion does not believe her, and so Satori gets chased out. But Koakuma had a bigger plan behind the scenes, and, in the end, she won. With Sanai's backstory, because of her troubled past the bullies in school, her only real friends were Kaneko and Suwako. The bullies did horrible things to her psyche, which in the end, made her snap. She ended the bullies before moving to Gensokyo, but her Yandere personality has stuck out throughout the series. In one of the most famous fights from the show, Kaneko, Reimu, and Romelia went to fight Watatsuki no Yorohime, expecting that a 3 on 3 fight should be easy. However, Yorohime put up an incredible fight that, in the end, led to a part 3 reference. <laughs> ah, those were bizarre. A bizarre adventure, if you will. The series ran for 18 episodes, plus a 9-parter episode 19 special, running until 2016. One problem though, 2016. We're in 2020, so where's the latest episode? Well, the series is currently on indefinite hiatus, otherwise known as being cancelled. The creator has lost interest over time for unknown reasons, but I assume it's burnout and life getting in the way. Remember, this was a passion project by some dude who made it for fun. You can only do something like that for so long though. Sentaku has remained quiet on if he would return or not, his last known update being on Pixev in 2019, basically saying that he has lost interest. Aside from that, he is lying low in the series, but if that is what he wants, then that's okay. Even though Sentaku Buna has stopped making these animations, he will forever be known as the guy who made Koishi Komeji's heartthrobbing adventure. I assume that he has moved on to bigger things since it is a common trait for artists to start something new with their new and improved skills, but it is a shame because the series ended on a cliffhanger. To be honest, the cliffhanger could be intentional so that the community can speculate on what could happen next. I mean, Sonic fans have been doing that since the 90s, so I see no reason why heartthrobbers could do the same. So there we are, Koishi Komeji's heartthrobbing adventure. Was it any good? I don't see why not. I mean, it was created by some dude with a passion, so you kind of have to respect the hustle. But in the meantime, I'm gonna take a break, so yeah, good night.